<clears throat> well, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching my video, by the way. Uh, I'm working on something here. And uh, like I explained in my last video, you know, when I get the inspiration to talk about something, I have to, I have to seize it. Otherwise, it goes away. And then uh, I don't remember what it was that I wanted to say. Even if I remember the general topic, I don't remember the, the actual, you know, literal thrust and spirit. Whoa, 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 hey, yo, okay. All right, um, so I'm going back a couple weeks to the um, broadcast or streamed church service from my church, First Baptist Church, St. Petersburg, by the way. It is 12, 10 a.m. Wednesday, January 27th, I think, 2021. And I'm trying to remember the lady's name. She's one of the pastors there. I think she might be the children's pastor, Amy Hobbs, I think is her name. And she had this thing with the candles. And every candle supposedly represented 3,500 3, lives uh, for the 30. 375,000 lives that died with COVID. You know, the whole lying with statistics thing. And we're all supposed to be just, you know, uh, awestruck with the tragedy of coronavirus and how try we're all supposed to be like, oh, oh, you know, and it's just, it's a complete political scam, right? Because Democrats, if you're a Democrat, you're going to go along with the, oh, you're going to be awestruck and you're going to be all sad and it's going to, because you buy into it, right? I mean, if you're a Republican, you're going to be like, what the heck is this, man? This is just crazy, right? So it's a political thing, you know, whether they want to admit it or not, it's political. I mean, it, it just is. I mean, if Democrats believe one thing and Republicans believe another, it's a political, you know? And yeah, you can sit and call each other liars or idiots or whatever you want to call whatever you want to call each other. But that's the way that's what politics is. That's the way politics is, right? So it's political. It's all political. But they just act like everybody who listens is going to be on their side. Like nobody else in the world exists except them. Which is really, you know, it's for me as a Republican, it's really bizarre. But that's. St modus operandi, that's that's standard SOP, standard operating procedure for them. They just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I always acknowledge the existence of other people. I don't, <clears throat> I just don't, even if they're, <clears throat> even if I don't agree, even if I think they're crazy, loony, you know. And a friend of mine was at a recent meeting at the church, and that's exactly what they told me. They said they're crazy, you know. They were talking about me, apparently, because I got trespassed. Uh, from the church, and John Rice told a bunch of lies, and, you know, so, and that's what they based the trespass on, was his lies, I think, I believe, because the letter that I got, uh, you know, is, it's filled with lies, so, the, le the letter that I got notifying me that I'm trespassed is based, it's filled with lies, I mean, you know, so, they said I was violent, or I threatened violence, I didn't threaten anybody, I raised my voice, that's all. I raised my voice. I was outside the church. The doors were shut. And I raised my voice. And that's it. So now they're saying, I mean, it's it's really, it's it's, cra it's crazy. And that's what my friend told me who was at the meeting. He, she, you know, they said, they're, they told me, they said, they're crazy, you know. So I don't know if this person is the only person that feels that way. But, you know, I mean, to watch Amy Hobbs do this thing, I called it an occultic, uh, satanic ceremony because she's in a dark room and she's standing in front, uh, behind a bunch of candles and her face is illuminated by the candles and she's being all melodramatic about all the people that's supposed to be... Nobody believes these numbers, you know? Uh, nobody believes these numbers, 375. Give me a break. Even like, uh, I think yesterday, the day before, the CDC came out no, sorry, the, the World Health Organization came out and said that the test they're using for the coronavirus is generating a lot of false positives. I mean, we've known that forever. We've known that forever, right? But they had to get Biden in to office before they could make that announcement because they're using coronavirus. They used coronavirus to get Trump out of office. That's where the mail-in ballots came in. Excuse me, can't have in-person voting. 
you know, all that stuff. So, and the local Democrats, they know, half of them know, not, not all of them, but half of them know it. Half of them are scamming the rest of us. And they know it. They know exactly what they're doing. They're scaring people. They're killing people. I have a friend who knows two people, two people who died from the lockdown. And this person knows zero people who died from coronavirus. Two people who died from depression through the, and you know, and they, they overdose on drugs from, be, from being locked in their house or whatever, you know, either they're not literally locked in their house, but they're psychologically locked in their house because they're afraid, like a lot of people are. I go everywhere, I do everything, I don't wear a mask, I don't wash my hands. I go, I, you know, when, the, when they, when I go to the grocery store, there are little persons out there cleaning the, uh, the uh, shopping cart. I say, I don't want to clean one, I want a dirty one. Do you have a dirty one? You know, because it's, uh, it's ridiculous, it's absurd, it's a scam. The whole thing is a scam. You know, uh, it's not 300 cent. No, it's ridiculous. It's, it's just crazy, you know, and it's not just me. It's a bunch of doctors, it's Dr. Simone Gold. There's like 1100 doctors in Germany that signed a letter saying that this thing is out of control. There's no rational justification with it. You know, it doesn't matter. Those doctors just get, they get fired. They get threatened. They get, uh, sidelined, you know, and that's the way it works. So I'm thinking about this thing that Amy Hobbs did, and I'm thinking about all the melodrama that they do at the church, and the angry people, if you don't wear a mask, they get angry at you, and they call you names, and they say you don't care about people, and you're cold-hearted, and this and that, and that and this, and it's like, it's like, uh, I'm thinking about this, you know, it's, it's just like, you know, something is not right here, people, something's not right, you know. We got these, uh, we've got these so-called spiritual leaders, you know, in our local communities. I need to put on my glasses so I can stop squinting. We have these uh, so-called spiritual leaders in our, in our local communities. And, uh, you know, here, here's the thing that is like really striking me tonight. It's like they get all upset about, they get all wound up, I should say, not upset. They get wound up. They get wound up about racial justice, social justice. Uh, some fake pandemic that's that's obvious that it's fake to half of the population, but it's not it's not obvious to them. But half of them know that it's fake, and they're going along with it because it serves their their personal what I call petty personal political interests. Like I have political interests. Everybody knows what my political interests are. I'm a Trump guy. I'm a right wing conservative. I'm like a you know, I'm like a three percenter. I'm like a, you know, super right wing Republican type person. Everybody knows that. You know, I have petty personal political interests too. The thing is, I say what mine are. I say what my petty personal political interests. I just say it. These are my personal. This is what I am. And then, you know, that's it. They don't say what they are. They pretend that they're the only people ex- who exist, right? And that everybody who doesn't agree with them. It just uh, deserves to be ignored or uh, called names, you know, sidelined, ostracized, uh, trespassed, you know, uh, lied about. Um, so it's very, uh, you know, it's, it's very, you know, I guess it's typical for politics, but it's also very tragic, especially when it happens in a church. You know, a church should be a bastion, you know, an anchor of uh, integrity in the community. You know, and that's really what I want to talk about is, is uh, just these disgraceful lying. They know they're lying. Half of them, half of them know they're lying, you know, and maybe like people like John Rice, and Amy Hoffman, maybe they have to lie and maybe they have to play the melodramatic role to keep their jobs, you know, because, uh, well, Dr. Money's not there anymore, but maybe he, you know, maybe he made them and, uh, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to be authoritative. To make your employees do what you want them to do. You know, all you have to do is raise your eyebrows. All you have to do is say very politely, this is what we're going to do. You know, and just, you know, you can very subtly uh, send some little, you know, uh, how you say, nonverbal cues that, you know, this is what you need to do. You know, this is what we're going to do. You know, and uh, you do it. If you, if you want to keep your job, you do it. You know, so maybe that's where they are. Maybe they really believe it. Maybe they have convinced themselves that they believe it because they have to believe it in order to keep their jobs, you know. And, uh, you know, the mind can do that kind of thing. The subconscious, it can do that. It can achieve that, you know. Uh, the mind can selectively ignore, selectively uh, emphasize things. 
in order to keep whatever going, like your paycheck, for example, to keep it going, you know, and it, not just their mind. I mean, my mind, everybody's mind, depending upon the circumstances, you know, that's how, that's how evil empires rise, you know, uh, people just justify things because the alternative is too terrible to think about. And that's normal human uh, thing. That's not like a judgment of uh, condemnation on anybody's character. That's just normal humanity. It shouldn't be that way. People should take, people should uh, aggressively take a stand for what's right continually. Every day we should wake up and be willing to lay it all on the line every single day. That's how you keep society healthy. That's how you keep things honest and above board. And I don't want to go on and on forever, but it, it should be that way. Um, I, I, you know, but, uh, so, so the thing, I mean, here's the thing. They get all, all wound up. Basically, it's every Democrat talking point. Basically, every single, every single one without fail. Boom, boom, boom. That's why I say this church, like a lot of churches, this is not like an exception, but, um, you know, and I'm sure it was the same way in Nazi Germany. Everybody likes to talk about the Nazis, the Nazis, the Nazis. So, well, I guess I'll join in and I'll talk about the Nazis too. I mean, everybody else does. So, uh, you know, I'm sure it was the same way in Nazi Germany. You know, the churches were going along to get along. And, uh, you know, whatever the Fuhrer said, the preachers said the same thing, you know. So it's just this, uh, it's Democrat Party talking points. They just get regurgitated. Like you hear them six and a half days a week and you go to church, you got to hear them another half day. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's like, you know, it's uh, the actually the Nazis called it motor speak. You know, you get everybody saying the same thing, and that's how you get your message uh, pounded into the psyche of the uh, society of a nation. You know, and eventually the world. I mean, this this particular scam, this particular COVID pandemic scam, is worldwide, right? So we're talking about the entire world here. So, um, but it's just really shameful. Uh, that to me, I mean, in my opinion, you know, that, uh, like I said, I don't know if it's the leadership like Amy Hobbs and John Rice, or if it's more like the lay leadership, uh, you know, the other people that lead the church that are just, they basically hijacked what a church is supposed to be. And they've, they've replaced it with political activism. So it's kind of like, um, Harrison Ford in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he sneaks into the thing and it's got the rare uh, archaeological artifact and he very gently lifts it off and then replaces it with something that uh, is the exact same weight, you know, as the original. And maybe it looks the same like the Pink Panther, you know, the Pink Panther sneaks into the museum and takes the giant diamond and puts a fake one in there, you know, very, very gently. It's, it's the same principle, you know. So uh, what used to be a church that was devoted to proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ is now a church that is devoted to uh, proclaiming and pounding into the congregation the doctrines of the Democrat Party, you know. And it's, you could sort of sit back and say like, uh, you know, sort of dispassionately, it's like, yeah, well, that's what we're used to. I mean, that's, we're used to that, right? I mean, that's just the way it is, and it's just, whatever, just go, go along to get along and blah, blah, blah. If you don't want to go there, go to a different church. And, you know, it's like, eh, you could do that. But, you know, here's the thing. This is the thing I'm thinking about tonight. It's like, while they're out there getting, promoting a fake pandemic, uh, social justice, a fake assault on the Capitol, uh, you know, after four months of uh, Democrat-friendly causes, burning down cities and causing billions of dollars in property damage and murdering small business owners and ruining small businesses that are family businesses for generations and et cetera, et cetera, so on and so on and so on. You know, we had a, a staged, uh, arguably fake, um, you know, uh, assault on the Capitol by, mil by over a million uh, Trump supporters. You know, they got videos of the police letting people in and waving people through, you know, Capitol Police. So um, not all the Capitol Police were involved, but I mean, some were. And I mean, that's all it took for the camera, for the uh, photo shoots, right? For the photo ops. That's all it took. So, I mean, I, I know people that were there and they're like, they're like, we didn't even know anything was happening. We were on the Capitol steps praying. I mean, we were just being completely peaceful, you know, or uh, that was a guy I knew in the front, a guy I knew in the back said there was like a million peaceful people there and 50 
agitators, you know. And then uh, there's a video of people handing uh, uh, sledgehammers, hammers, and axes to the people outside from inside the Capitol building. They're handing people through an open window, handing people these uh, tools to it. So, you know, and besides, it's like a couple windows were broken and, you know, and one lady supposedly got shot in the neck, but people were saying, no, she that was a false flag because, uh, you know, when you listen to... Uh, when you listen to uh, people who have experience in military operations, they all know about crisis actors. They all use crisis actors. Like uh, this one guy I listened to on YouTube said they they would uh, you know they would do uh, how do you say uh, like uh, practice uh, things for to take over a cruise ship. You know maybe a cruise ship was compromised or something. You know and it needed to be taken over. Well. In the plan, they had 100 or 200 crisis actors acting as if they were just vacationers on the cruise ship. So, excuse me. So crisis actors have a role in terms of doing good or doing evil. I mean, it's just a tool. It's not like it's not like a concept or an idea that's inherently evil. It's just a tool to accomplish a military or political goal. That's all it is. So, um so they, you know, so there's people say she's a crisis actor, and then uh, you know, uh, one of the Capitol Police had a uh, blood clot. Uh, he had a, you know, a known medical issue, and I guess just coincidentally, or maybe it was a stress, I don't know. But the family's out there saying, "Will you please stop saying that he got killed in the Capitol thing? That wasn't what happened. He he had a known medical issue, and he died that day, or or you know, had to be taken to the hospital and died a little bit later, or whatever. I mean." So, uh, and then a couple of the uh, people who were uh, rush, who supposedly were, you know, assaulting the Capitol were killed. I don't know the details about them, but anyway, um, yeah, so uh, it's just really, it, it, you know, to me, it's just, it's just really shameful, really. I mean, like I said, if you want to be a Democrat Party doctrine promoting uh, hub, in the community or a political action committee in the community, then you should tell people that's what you are. You know, you should just come out and say, you know, we're a Baptist church, you know, but we also are a Democrat Party advocate. And we're an advocate for the Democrat Party. That would be honest. That would be straightforward. It's like we basically promote everything the Democrat Party says that we, that, that uh, you know, Whatever they say, we promote it. You know, the COVID thing, the pandemic. I mean, whatever mainstream society, that's what we're like. A We're like a mainstream society, popular culture, uh, repeater. We're like a local repeater for popular culture narratives. And we're also a church. You know, that would be honest. I mean, who could, who could argue with that? You could say, well, you know, people could, people could object. You could say you shouldn't be that. But it wouldn't really be like, you know, there wouldn't be there wouldn't be the issue of the the fakery, you know, and the pretending, and the, you know, really the just the nonsensicalness of pretending that other people don't exist, you know, or that the other people who do exist are somehow second class citizens, or they deserve to be ignored, or they they don't deserve to be acknowledged, which is just a different way of saying they deserve to be ignored, right? So. <clears throat> I mean that that's all bad enough, right? But this is the thing that's bothering me tonight. It's I think it's much more evil than that. I think it's profoundly more evil than that. Because think about this. It's widely known that we have more slaves in the world right now than at any time in history, in world history. And that these slaves are largely, if not mostly, women and children, and they are used for uh, for uh, labor slavery, yes, they are used for that, but they're also used for sex slavery, you know? So, these so-called spiritual leaders are getting all excited about a fake pandemic, getting all wound up about some George Soros Democrat Party promoted notion, a uh, popular culture notion of social justice, and racism and all these kind of like sort of like quasi abstract like you know it's like 
but they don't care about 40 million slaves who are largely, if not mostly, women and children. That's something is not right there, right? Something ain't right. Something is not right. And then you got Governor uh, Noose, not Newsom, Governor uh, Latham, Ralph Northam, or whatever his name is, out of Virginia, you know, goes on national radio. Okay, national radio, and he promotes genocide. He promotes, uh, not genocide, infanticide. He promotes expanding the definition of abortion to include babies that were born up to two hours ago. So that way a woman can actually give birth, and then she can decide to abort her baby after the baby's already born. But these so-called spiritual leaders, they don't care about that either. See, because neither one of those things are Democrat Party talking points. Neither one of those things are pop culture narratives. So really, my conclusion tonight is that Amy Hobbs and John Rice and every other every other person who's a leader, even lay leaders, uh, you know, you're all frauds. You're all fakes. Uh, I, I don't think you know what you're doing at all. I mean, I think you're so woefully lost that you're literally at risk of stumbling into hell, like tripping and falling into hell. I think that you're totally uh, spiritually lost. I don't think you're like consciously running into hell, but I think you're like dancing around the lip of the cavern that once you go over the edge, you know, you fall right into hell. And uh, that's my conclusion. Those are my thoughts. As usual, they're kind of provocative. I mean, I mean, they're kind of strongly worded. But, you know, God is very strongly worded in the Bible. Jesus was strongly worded in the New Testament. I, you know, I, I don't get that. No, actually, actually, I do get it. They want to go to church and turn church, the ministry of God and the ministry of Christ, in a dangerous, deadly, and abusive wor world. They want to turn it into a flower club, you know, where everybody's like, so pretty today. Oh, no, put away your mask. You want to be safe. Right? They want to turn into this little pathetic, stupid, insipid, silly, worthless, feckless, uh, how do you say, uh, impotent uh, gathering of people that are equally lost. I mean, if your leaders are lost, what, what are the people that are, the leaders are leading? They've got to be lost too. They're all gonna. They're all in danger of stumbling into hell. They're they're in danger of following their leaders into hell after their leaders clumsily stumble and fall into hell. You know, I mean. So those are my thoughts. These are my concerns. Thank you for watching again today. Is uh, Wednesday, January twenty seventh, if I'm not mistaken. It's twelve thirty two a.m. now. God bless you. I uh, hope, uh, you know, I hope there's something of value here. I'm not just saying this. Uh, I, I'm not angry per se. I not. I don't wish anybody any harm. It's just these are my thoughts and these are my people get angry when I say things. Because, I, I mean, I guess I understand it's provocative and strongly worded. But, uh, you know, there's no malintent. I mean, actually, the intention is to, well, actually, the intention is just to follow the instructions. You open your social media account. It's like, what are you thinking? Well, this is what I'm thinking. And this is what I'm thinking. I hope I hope it's uh, I hope there's something of interest for you here. And again, uh, thank you for watching. God bless you, and uh, peace and blessings be on you and yours. You know, but uh, I don't see a way that we can have peace without justice. I don't see how I don't understand how that could ever work. You know, and 40 million slaves more than ever, and, and you know, and uh, national leaders going on TV advocating infanticide and. Spiritual leaders, they don't care. They're talking about pop culture narratives and, uh, you know. No, there's not going to be any peace under those circumstances. God bless you. Bye.